Hello everyone, my name is Amir Agakuchak from University of California, Irvine, and on behalf of my co-authors, I present our work on updating rainfall intensity duration frequency curves using a non-stationary approach and climate projections. Current IDF curves are based on the so-called stationary assumption, which means we assume statistics of extremes remain more or less the same and the past represents the future. But in some parts of the world, extreme precipitation has changed significantly over the past decades, including annual maxima, like top left, or extremes above a threshold, 90 percentile or 70 percentile of precipitation values. You can see sample precipitation trends across different durations based on historical data. But a historical trend in observations doesn't mean that it will continue in the future. Integrating a trend in observations in extreme value analysis is not that challenging, but we don't know how this trend will continue in the future. And we don't want to make any assumptions about future trends based on just historical observations. In a 2018 paper led by Elisa Ranio, we developed a methodology for integrating climate model projections and historical observations together to get an idea about future projections and develop non-stationary IDF curves. Most of my presentation today will be based on this paper. The model we developed for this purpose is process-informed non-stationary extreme value analysis, or PRONEVA. It's a generalized model that can be used for IDF curve analysis or other applications. The source code is available on my website. Here is the link. In this method, we have some built-in extreme value distributions, like GEV, GP, or log Pearson type 3. The model allows you to do both stationary and non-stationary analysis. It includes some methods for detecting non-stationarity with respect to mean value of a certain variable or, or variability. Depending on the choice of model, stationary or non-stationary model, you can uh, select the type of function, non-stationary function, linear or non-linear if needed. In most climate applications, we go with linear because we don't have very long-term records and evidence of nonlinear change. But this model also allows you to bring in physically-based or process-based covariates. For example, changes in response to CO2 emissions or floods in response to land use change. And I will show you a couple of examples. The model includes a Bayesian framework for parameter estimation and uncertainty analysis, and includes some built-in diagnostics for testing goodness of fit. In addition to the source code, a version using a graphical user interface is also available for those who don't want to deal with codes. First, a quick background. IDF curve analysis involves looking at different precipitation durations, hourly, six hourly, daily, and more. And for each duration, we extract extremes, usually annual maxima, the fit and extreme value distribution, and generate figures like this. We have duration in one axis, intensity in another, and return period curves, like in this case. If we have a trend in precipitation, it means the distribution of precipitation changes or moves or shifts over time, like in this example. In a stationary approach, we have one distribution with fixed parameters. But if statistics of extremes change over time, it means we may need parameters that evolve over time or in response to a physically-based driver. In our approach, we use many different climate model simulations, and we treat each model separately. We do IDF curves analysis based on the method I presented earlier. We use future trends from model projections downscaled, and we look at future projections relative to historical observations to avoid any issues about biases across different models. The red line here 
in the left panel shows an example historical idea of curve. We have return period in the x-axis and return level in the y-axis. Return level here is precipitation intensity. If we use many different climate models, we get different idea of curves, the dotted lines here. And for a given return period, let's say 25 year daily rainfall, we will have different return levels. Now we can look at that particular return level in projections, right panel, and look at their corresponding return periods. This method allows us to see how today's 100 year event will change in a warming, warming climate under a certain future pathway, representative pathway. This method is already included in the ASC Manual of Practice as a method for updating idea of curves. To be more specific, here for any given return period based on historical observations, we can get a range of return periods based on future projections. And our method, again, involves a Bayesian-based framework for parameter estimation and uncertainty analysis. And this method allows us to put confidence intervals around today's return period values and look at future relative to past. Here is an, an example from San Francisco. On the left, we see 50-year precipitation IDF curves. The y-axis, we have precipitation in millimeter per day. And the x-axis, we have different durations. Here, daily, different days, one day, two day precipitation. The blue line represents IDF curves based on historical data. This is what you get from NOAA IDF curves in the US. And the red line is the same IDF curves based on future projections. And here, future projections are bias corrected relative to historical observations. And as you can see, the red line is above the blue line, means we expect more extreme precipitations in the future, and we have confidence intervals for both. Now, if we look at the right figure, we can look at any given historical precipitation return period, for example, 50 year rainfall, this blue circle corresponds to a particular return level, for example, 125. If you look at the same 125 millimeter per day in future projections, we end up with return period of around 29 years. This means what we consider today as 50 year extreme precipitation will change into a 29 year event in a warming climate under RCP 4.5. This means we expect this particular event to occur more frequently in the future. We have done this for different locations around the US and many California cities. I'm showing um, California in this slide. As you can see, in some places, the two future and past are kind of similar, like in Riverside. But in some other places, like San Diego or um, Sacramento, we see a big difference between future projections and historical observations. Again, in all these figures, the gray line is based on NOAA idea of curves. Here are similar figures under RCP 8.5. The model allows us to look at change in return period. As I mentioned earlier, the model allows us to look at today's 50 year or 100 year event relative to future projections. Top left shows 50 year and top right shows 100 year events. Here, the green line corresponds to what today we consider as 50 or 100 year events. And you can see that in most places, what we expect in a warming climate is below the 100 year line. It means the events are expected to occur more frequently. We can translate this change in return period into something like a safety factor, bottom left. This means that what we need to use, what kind of adjustment factor do we need to use on historical observations to update changes in statistics of extremes based on future projections. This allows us to simplify the process 
quickly address change in the statistics of extremes using just one single factor. Changes in the statistics of extremes obviously means a higher risk of failure for different critical infrastructure systems like levees and dams. This issue requires a great deal of attention. Model projections do not provide hourly or sub-hourly simulations, but there are methods out there to downscale if needed. This model, for example, allows us to downscale future projections using a non-stationary approach. Here are a list of publications and reports related to what I presented today, provide more information for those who are interested to learn more. As I mentioned earlier, this model allows us to not only look at changes in statistics of extremes over time, but also bringing in physically based or process based drivers. For example, urbanization can change statistics of flooding. Here is one example in which we looked at changes in extremes, not as a function of time, but as a function of urbanization. Here we had data about fraction of urbanization from 37% to 62% in one basin. And we used urbanization as a process-based driver of change in statistics of river discharge, not rainfall in this case, but river discharge. Here we showed that urbanization from 37% to 62% changes statistics of flooding significantly if we ignore urbanization and use a simple stationary approach for flood frequency analysis, we underestimate the 50-year flood risk by 25% in this example. The same applies to different return periods. In this presentation, I did not go into details of process-based non-stationary analysis. There is a 2019 paper led by Dr. Elisa Ranio that explains this method with some additional examples. In summary, our method allows to bring in future projections and consider non-stationarity if needed in IDF curve analysis. And I think given the observed increase in statistics of extremes and also future projections pointing to more extreme events in the future, we need to update our IDF curves to make sure we do not underestimate the risk of future hazards. With that, I'd like to conclude. I'll be happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you.